God love you. I want to say this to you that Jesus love you, and He has good plans for you, and He is for you. I like to encourage you to hear this, because Jesus love you. And he is for you, and he wants to help you, especially if you are people in life. In life, you are not someone that are strong in certain things, and because you are weak in certain things, you are not strong in certain things. People take advantage of you, maybe physically, maybe、uh, in your mentally, or maybe because where. You are born, and as a result, you are considered the weaker party in life, and people take advantage of you, and even maybe bully you, and take things from you. So I want to share with you a good news that is. Jesus can help you, and why He can help you. In the Bible, there is this incident. There is in this incident that happened when the children of Israel came out from Egypt, and while they were traveling halfway through, there is. A group of people started to attack them, and they attack the weaker part of their groups of people—people people that are moving behind, people that are weaker—and they were being attacked. And let us just go to the scripture to see from the scripture this passage, Deuteronomy. Twenty-five, verse seventeen. So, this is what was written that happened. A reminder to the people of Israel: Remember what Amalek did to you on the way as you were coming out of Egypt. How he met you. On the way and attack your rear ranks, the stragglers at your rear. When you were tired and weary, and he did not fear God. So in life, there are people who take advantage of people. Like recently, not long ago, I heard of a friend of me share with me in a certain country. They are they are still having slavery, modern slavery, modern slavery, put the people into slavery. I believe not just that country, maybe there are other country as well. They put people in slavery, and it's so sad to hear that. And one of the thing is that our ministry, our ministry will always. Every month, we will set aside certain finance to bless other ministry or organization, and we bless this organization also that help to set the slave in that country, and help to set them free, and help them in different ways,、uh, like. Digging well for them and doing all these things, we will give to this ministry, and ministry that are reaching out to people to help people, both spiritually, emotionally. I mean, in their soul and also physically, physically help them. And spiritually, what we mean is to bring the good news of the gospel to them. So this is one of the thing what our ministry will do. Every month we will set aside finance to help in all this area. So coming back to the part, that, so these slave because they are weak, they are struggling financially. They became slave to certain people, and they have to work very hard 
to clear their debts. And you may even watch movie and show, and that's what happened to people. So I want to share this with you, that Jesus can help you. If you are into some kind of this thing and people are taking advantage of you because for some reason, you are in the weaker position and people are taking advantage of you. And I want to say to you that God can help you. And God is not happy with people that are taking advantage of people putting people into slavery or bullying people. You may be a children that are going to school and because of certain reason you are being bullied, I want to say to you that God can help you. Whoever you are, men, women, children or elderly people, Jesus can help you. And that is what happened in the in the Bible, when he mentioned about this, they were being attacked by the Amalek because, and the Amalek attacked those who are walking behind, those who are weary, those who are tired, those who are weaker. And that's what happened. And when you go to the main parts, the story of what happened, it's actually happened in Exodus. Chapter 17, verse 8. I'm not going to go into a very deep expound of this teaching, but just a few main, a few main points. Because uh, this is not our main message, but this is, a, this is an exhortation and a word, especially for people that has not yet received Jesus Christ and you will come to know why Jesus can help you. Just a short exhortation from here. So what happened is in Exodus chapter 17, verse 8. Now Amalek came and fought with Israel in Raphidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose us some men and go out, fight with Amalek. Today, so tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron and Hu went up to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed and when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands became heavy, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and who supported his hand, one on one side and the other on the other side, and his hand was steady until going down of the sun. Okay, so we are in verse 12. So Joshua, verse 13, so Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this for a memorial in the book and recount it in the hearing of Joshua that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Verse 15, And Moses built an altar and called his name, The Lord is my banner. Or, Many of us believers of Jesus Christ call it Jehovah Nisi. Verse 16, for he said, Because the Lord has sworn, the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. So actually, God is not happy with people that bully or take advantage of the weak. And it's like a saying that God is will fight against these people. Fight against these people. We are not talking about the exact Amalek as the Bible always has a meaning behind it. So it's not talking about 
physically you go and fight with people that are Amalek or descendants of Amalek but more of it is talking about the Bible has meaning that all these things speaks has a meaning behind it that God is against people who take advantage of people so if you are hearing this you are people that are being taken advantage because of your weakness in some area God is going to defend for you and he wants to defend for you Jesus wants to defend for you Jesus wants to help you and he can help you and from this passage we will tell you why he can help you so the Bible also says that all these things in the Old Testament that was written there are like shadow of Jesus Christ what Jesus is going to do so these are Old Testament these are stories true story before Jesus came 2,000 years ago and died for us so these are story more than 2,000 years ago but these are all shadows and pictures of what Jesus is going to do for us at the cross so what happened as you read from this passage is that is what happened is that Moses said that he will take the rod of God like I say, I'm not going to go into deep expound of it, so I will not be showing, comparing many verses to help you to see because that will take a lot of time. But I will try to make it simple, especially for people that has not come to know Jesus Christ. So what happened is, in this story is that Moses will take the rod of God and go out to the hill and lift out his hand if he lift out his hand if he stay in that position in that position they will win the war so joshua and his people will go down and fight it's not that they do not need to fight it's not that they will just sit at one side and watch and the Amalek will just destroy themselves. God tell him, you must go down and fight. So that our understanding in here is that as God wants us, many times God wants us to do the natural thing. Just like Joshua, they all, they still do the natural thing to defend for the way. This Joshua, there are people who defend for the week. Oh, you are defending yourself. Maybe you are going to a court case. You are going to, uh, you need, either the lawyer is going to defend, you are going to defend yourself. So, you do the natural thing, and God is going to help you, just like this case. They go down to naturally fight with the people, and as a result, if Moses stay in that position, they will win the war. When they fight, they will win the war. It's a very interesting story in the Bible. It's just like if Moses, the Bible says that when Moses' hand was down, they start to lose the war. And if his hand is lifted in that position, they start to be able to win the war. Means like is they are still fighting. Suddenly, maybe they feel they have a stronger blow. Every strike of them, they strike accurately. They hit accurately. Every position, they start to act against the Amalek. Started to act correctly. There is a empowerment come to them. They are still fighting empower them so sometimes even as i preach i know i'm speaking to some believer sometimes you just started to be in the right place at the right time saying the right thing doing the right thing and some of you are closing sales maybe you are a salesman and you are just like just having favor when the thing you say you just say correctly the things that you do you just do correctly and things start to break through and you start to have success results some christian thinks that it's because of how smart they are okay i'm i do think that you are smart amen praise the lord i do think that you are smart but it, many times it's also god at that moment 
is definitely God at that moment help you. Help you, enable you, giving you the wisdom, the right words to say. And sometimes you, after the success that you have accomplished, you say, I, I just know what to say. But actually, it's God gave you the wisdom because of Jesus Christ. Okay, so let me share with you how this picture bring to Jesus for believers and non-believers. So for believers, I want to encourage you also is that yes, you look to Jesus, but many times you still need to do the natural thing. It's not saying you do not need to do anything. You see, Joshua did not say that I did not need to do anything. Moses did not say to Joshua, you did not need to go down and fight. As long as my hand is in that position, you will win the war. He still understands, they all understand that they must go down to fight the war. Amen. So what happened is, so what happened is I want to show to you how the picture of Jesus was in this, in this story. So what happened is that Moses must lift up his hand in such a way that both of his hands lift up. Actually, it's a picture of Jesus at the cross. So when his hand go down, he is not in that position anymore. When Jesus was at the cross, that is the position that he was at the cross. That is the position. This is the position of the cross. So as long as Moses was in that position, it represents Jesus at the cross. It represents that Jesus at the cross they win the war. So this is a message inside is that we are going to win the war because of Jesus, he went to the cross. Because of Jesus, he went to the cross. He can turn the whole situation around so that you can win the war and set free so that you can protect yourself and all the people that you are trying to protect because of Jesus. You are going to win the court case. You are going to win the deal. You are going to win in life. You are going to become smarter, better, because of Jesus. Because at the cross, Jesus Christ loved us human beings, loved the world, human especially, so much that at the cross, He took the defeat for us. He took the punishments for us. He took the punishment for you and me. He took the defeat for you and me so that He can give us His victory. Amen. That is what happened 2,000 years ago at the cross, what Jesus did for us. The Bible says that He is without sin, without any wrong. Perfectly in His thoughts, in His hearts, in every cell of Him, every part of Him, He did correctly with love. There's nothing you can find in him to punish him. But he himself, the Bible says he himself went to the cross for you and me. Not for himself, because he did not did anything wrong. But he went to the cross for us. to take all the bad thing and the punishment for us so that we can be victorious in life, so that we can be successful, so that we can be set free, so that we can be protected 
because he went to the cross for us. So, I'd like to invite you, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to ask you to pray this prayer to receive Jesus Christ. And that will be the beginning, the starting of things turn around. And He will continue to teach you what to do by His precious, beloved Holy Spirit that He will send to be with us who receive Him as Lord and Savior. He will teach you, He will guide you, and you will have victory in life. Amen. So I want you to pray this prayer with me to receive the love of Jesus Christ all that He has done for you to receive Him, the person that loves you the most, more than every human being on earth. Not only He loves you, but He can help you. So pray this prayer with me, and Sister Christine will also follow me, pray this prayer. She's a believer. You can just follow her how she pray this prayer, how she follow me. Amen. Let's close our eyes and say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Thank you for your love for me. Thank you for your love for me. Thank you for what you did for me 2,000 years ago. Thank you for what you did for me 2,000 years ago. You went to the cross and took all my sins and my mistake and my ancestor sins and mistake also. You went to the cross and you took all my sins and mistakes and all my ancestors' sins and mistakes also. You took them on yourself. You took them on yourself. You took the punishment. You took the punishment. So that I can be set free. So that I can be set free. Today, I officially receive you as my Lord and Saviour. Today, I officially receive you as my Lord and Saviour. I receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. I receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. And all that you have done for me. And all that you have done for me. I receive the miracles to be born again. I receive the miracle to be born again. I am safe. I am saved. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Christine. And thank you for praying with me this most precious and powerful prayer in your life. This is one of the most important decision in your life that you have ever made or the most important decision you have made and your life will be changed and he can help you and turn things around for you amen praise the lord thank you so much for praying uh, with me so you can find a local church to share with them what happened to you and join that church tell them you received jesus christ and be because you pray that prayer you really did receive jesus christ so don't let anyone say that that is not official that is official when you pray that prayer heaven earth god in heaven hear your prayers and the holy spirit he has sent the holy spirit to live in you with you to help you Amen. So you can find a church. Remember, when you go to a church, you're supposed to grow in faith, grow in peace, grow in love, grow in the knowledge of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These are all very important things. If you start to grow and start to become more fearful, angry, unhappy, or even more judgmental, then I encourage you go to somewhere else that will grow in love for people. Fruits of the Spirit is the, we call it fruit of the Spirit, is the character to show that you are growing in love. 
love God more and also love people more. Not just love God more, but love people more and know that God's love for you. Amen. But if you're not growing in that direction, find somewhere else or continue. Join our online service and your life will be changed. Your life will be changed just like many of the people here. Their life their life are totally changed and you can go to our channels our youtube channel to look for the testimony part how some of them share their testimony amen praise the lord hallelujah 